Okay, Alex, we're good. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome you to our event today. And as a way of introduction, my name is Alexandra Navarro. I am originally from Colombia. I am the Chief of Staff Officer at Latinas in Tech, and my pronouns is she, her, or ella. I would love to hear where you are turning in from, so drop your city in the event chat. And before we begin, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Expedia, and their entire team who collaborated with us to make this event happen. And of course, another huge thank you our audience for making time to tune in and connect with us from your home. If this is your first Latinas in Tech event, welcome. You are in a great company and this is an awesome opportunity for each one of you to connect with our Latinas and to help grow your career. This event is basically for you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Latinas in Tech. Our mission is to provide you with the resources, with opportunities, and with a community of Latinas that need to thrive and that want to innovate and why not to lead into tech. We do this by building programs. We have events like the Today One that is focused on professional development, recruitment, and mentorship as well. Please don't forget to join our website, latinasintech.org, latinasintech.org, where you can connect with each other and also access to job opportunities. Um, well, we are gonna record this webinar, but also you are gonna have all our past webinars in our, in our website. And if you are Latina and if you are in tech, this is the right place for you. You will be joining about 6,000 women already there and you can create your profile just by visiting our website. As always, we love connecting with anyone interested in the work we do. So feel free to reach us to us directly. Some housekeeping items. Uh, well, please add, use your key and a bottom to any questions you have for the panelists. Make sure to also switch to everyone so they can see your comments. And well, we are ready to start. I am very happy and it's my pleasure to introduce you to our moderator for this afternoon, Ariane Gorin, our president of Expedia Business Services. So Ariane, welcome and take it away. Thank you so much, Alexandra. And, uh, and thank you to Latinas in Tech for, uh, for partnering with us on this session. Um, as background, so uh, I'm Ariane Gorin. I'm president of Expedia for Business. I'm based in London. It was actually, it was very cool to see the all of people's locations really all around the world, uh, but I'm originally from California. Uh, as a bit of background, Expedia Group is the largest travel company in the world. Uh, we are a company that believes that travel is a force for good. And our mission is to power global travel for everyone, everywhere, uh, which I feel fortunate because I think it's an amazing mission to have. Uh, I'm also the executive sponsor of what we call LEAD, which is our Latinx at Expedia and Allies for Development Inclusion Business Group um, with the goal of advancing our Latinx community and its allies. Uh, we have five chapters and we're growing. Um, so it's, it's wonderful to, to see that. And right now we're wrapping up Hispanic Heritage Month and this event is really the capstone to it. So thank you all for joining. I don't think you wanna to hear too much more from me. So we will turn it over directly to our four panelists, Claudia, Christina, Cynthia, and Erica. And instead of me introducing them, I thought I would just let them each start out by telling us a bit about themselves and how they ended up in the position that they're in. So Cynthia, why don't we start with you? Coming to us from hey. Seattle, right? Wow, privilege. <laughs> Coming first. <laughs> so hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm joining from Seattle from the Expedia office. So I'm really excited to be here. I've been coming the whole week. It's exciting to be back uh, and, and to see you all here, all these Latinas around the world coming together. 
So about me, I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina, many, many years ago. You don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> I actually grew up in Ibiza. Sounds weird. If you hear about this island, it's this little party island situated somewhere in the Mediterranean. So at some point I had to get out, decided to go to Barcelona, my favorite city in the world ever, uh, which is where I studied economics and law. I practiced law for many years and realized I didn't want to be a lawyer. So I head out to Singapore uh, for the past 15 years. Uh, I basically grew up there most of my career, did an MBA. That was the reason why I went there uh, and joined Expedia. Uh, I actually joined Expedia five years ago in Singapore. And, uh, and then I just moved to Seattle this year in the middle of the pandemic. So any interesting anecdotes that you want to hear about that, including my container is still somewhere in a port. So I'm living in a suitcase for the last uh, five months, um, which is exciting. You realize how little you need to be happy. Uh, yeah, and so here I am. I lead strategic partnerships for Expedia Group for some of our largest financial institutions account. It's an exciting role. You get to see everything from product, marketing, servicing, strategy, and actually to work with our B2B clients that actually at the end are trying to, yeah, support and, uh, and serve their own customers. So a great opportunity for me to know the organization end to end and to tell you more about that whenever you want. Thank you, Cynthia. Well, I hope that your stuff arrives in the container pretty soon. <laughs> um, Christina, can I hand it over to you, please? Sure. Thank you, Ariane, uh, and welcome everybody to this uh, fantastic session. I'm Christina Alcocer, and I'm originally uh, born and raised in Madrid, Spain. And Cynthia, if uh, your favorite city is Barcelona, it's because you haven't been to Madrid. Um, but I studied also law and business, and I decided to uh, go and do an MBA in um, in Chicago. And after that, I pretty much kind of stayed. Uh, after my MBA, I went to consulting, management consulting. I worked there for a few years, um, moved to my client, United Airlines. I also worked there for a few years, was there during, um, I was hired a few days right before September 11. So I, I had a very interesting experience of uh, living it in from the inside. Um, and from there, I moved to Orbitz, and I was at Orbitz for um, 14 years, I think, more or less, until we got acquired by Expedia. I was managing landing pages, and then I moved to the team where I'm currently at, which is the uh, hybrid and cloud infrastructure team um, in the platform side of the house. So, um, and I'm leading the product team, and I've been doing that now for. Um, I think it's going to be a year next uh, week. So uh, happy to talk about infrastructure to anybody who's interested. Happy um, anniversary, Christina. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I just looked at 1014 and I was like, oh my God, I think it was 1015 uh, when I started. But uh, yeah, uh, tenure of like 16 years plus uh, at Expedia. Great. Thank you. Uh, Claudia, can I hand it to you in? in Madrid. Sure. Hi, everybody. Well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, having us here. It's an enormous pleasure for me to be part of this panel and uh, to help and support our team in tech. So a little bit about me. I was uh, born and raised in Venezuela. I studied computer engineering at uh, the Universidad Simón Bolívar. Uh, and I started my career as a web developer using PHP and MySQL. That sounds like landline phones today, right? So yeah, a long time a long time ago. But I moved to Spain 11 years ago and uh, I held several roles as a TPM for software development teams, but also uh, for system and networking engineer teams. And back in 2019, so almost uh, yeah, seven years ago or so, uh, I got a role as integration engagement manager uh, at Verbo, that is now part of Expedia Group. And uh, I started working with our vacational rental software, software providers, helping them uh, develop their APIs and uh, making sure that they would bring uh, great supply for our travelers. Uh, but then later on, I got an opportunity to lead an operational team. And a lot of people told me like, 
are you moving away from tech? And I said, well, it's a leadership opportunity. Let me try that, right? Even if it's not leading a technical team. And uh, thanks to that move, I was able to develop a lot of new skills and I was able to be exposed to challenges that I was never exposed before. And that basically helped me and led me back to where I am today. Today I lead uh, the integration services uh, team at Expedia Group, uh, which uh, basically helps now all the software providers for conventional lodging and VR, vacational rental, to do the integration. So what I was doing when I started as an individual contributor now, um, uh, uh, gratefully and, and, and very uh, uh, excited to lead that team. So uh, very happy to be here today again and looking forward to, to uh, connect with, with this amazing community. Thank you, Claudia. And I know the work you do with our, our software providers in, uh, in hotel and vacation rentals is very impactful. It helps everyone then be able to go on vacation. Um, Erica, why don't we hand it over to you in Seattle to hear about your background as well? Yeah, happy to. So I grew up in California. I'm a first generation American. Uh, my parents came from Nicaragua and from Germany, respectively. Um, I kind of you know, I'm going to start at the beginning, but as a kid, I was just always really into math and electronics and how things worked. And my father, he was a, a construction worker by day, but he had kind of a shed that he would tinker in. And I used to love to tinker with him. So that's really kind of what started me down the path of engineering. So I went to school, um, studied electrical engineering and computer science and started as a dev. So I did Perl scripting and Java uh, primarily. Um, and then kind of as I was working as a dev, I found myself really wanting to understand how decisions were being made. Um, so I started kind of volunteering to go to the technical review board with my recommendations and um, really liked being a fly on the wall for those discussions. Um, and that's really what got me interested into kind of what else is out there. And I didn't really know kind of what the other fields actually did. Um, so there was a rotational program at the company I was at. Um, where really kind of every quarter you got to rotate and review a high risk program um, in a wide variety of things across the company. So I traveled across the company. I did kind of a wide gamut of things from engineering related, but also finance operations. I spent some time in investor relations, so really got a pretty wide view. Um, and then really another story, which I won't get into, is just how important mentorship has been um, throughout that journey. Um, and so mentors at the time that I had, um, were really like, hey, you should think about an MBA. And it wasn't something I had considered before. Um, I had done my master's at this time in engineering and um, kind of thought about perhaps going down the PhD route. Um, but I took their advice, checked into it, ended up going and getting my MBA. Um, and then it was kind of continuing down that path of wondering what else is there out there. So I had been, you know, in aerospace for the first six years of my career, and I wanted to see you know, what do other industries do? So I was a consultant for four years, traveled around, did again, kind of tried to pick every project to be as different as possible from the, the prior project. So did a wide variety of things from, you know, strategies, organizational strategies, negotiation strategies, actually redoing people's pricing, um, et cetera. Um, and then decided I wanted to go back to industry. So um, looked at kind of a wide variety, took the time that consulting affords to really just think about what I wanted to do um, and ended up really kind of deciding I wanted to be on that interface of consumer and tech. And um, so that's really what brought me to Expedia. Um, I started in strategy, which is, you know, kind of one of the easier transitions from consulting. Um, and then kind of over time started taking on more um, functional uh, parts of uh, cross-functional work um, that I hadn't done before, um, and then uh, was asked to, to look into a role in supply, so ended up uh, moving to Germany, leading supply and um, kind of account management, the negotiations, operations for car rentals, um, and then most recently, about two years ago, was asked to come back, um, was excited to move back to Seattle, um, and lead uh, our insure tech business. So um, now I've kind of come full circle. So similar to you, Claudia, of um, now I'm back to, to the tech world. I have supply product and tech and I'm super excited about uh, the role I have today. Thank you, Erica. It was interesting. All of you have um, 
have had sort of myriad experiences and tried different things to then get to, to where you are. And I know we will hear more about that as we continue. So my next question is for Claudia and Christina, and Claudia, we'll start with you. And that is, what advice would you give to your younger self? Um, and what did you learn with experience that you wish you had known when you were starting out? Sure, so, so I guess the first thing that I would uh, tell myself is don't fight with your dad when he tells you computer engineer will open the door for you. Uh, and being a teacher, it's okay, but uh, you, you'll get bigger opportunities, right? So just enjoy your time at uni. It's going to be fine. Uh, you'll get there. You'll get what you are passionate about. Um, I will also tell myself that you are valuable. You don't need to constantly prove yourself, even when others saying, are saying the opposite. Um, as, as a Latina in tech, we all know that we sometimes face, you know, imposter syndrome. We constantly feel that we need to prove ourselves to, to get to the next level. So um, now that I've been in, in, in this career path for a little bit longer, I would tell myself, like, you're valuable. You'll, you'll get there. Um, but also that uh, you'll need to change and, ad and adjust a lot through your journey, right? And uh, you'll find new job opportunities. So as Erica said, use mentorship. When going through difficult changes, when uh, trying to find, uh, when you're finding yourself in like complex situation, uh, you're not alone. Others have faced that in the past, right? So ask for help find a mentor that can guide you through those challenges and you'll see that uh, uh, it will be easier for you to get to that uh, next step or, or to sort that out, right? So um, that I didn't know until probably a couple of years ago and now it's been a lifesaver basically. Uh, then uh, that uh, moving to another country is going to be difficult, right? So Racism and microaggressions are real problems. So learn about that, learn how to face that and manage that because you don't need to change your identity to fit in. You don't need to find jokes about your accent or your cultural background funny. They are not, you don't need to accept that. It is okay to have a different accent, both in Spanish and English. And your, your cultural identity is one of your biggest assets. So as well as your education, your values, your value story, and your technical knowledge. So th those are the things. And finally, being an advocate for the Latinx community and other underrepresented uh, groups is going to be one of the things you enjoy the most uh, at, at this time of, of, of your uh, career. So uh, don't feel afraid to continue doing that. Thanks, Claudia. Christina, what about you? I would I would tell everything that Claudia is telling her young self, but um, I, I guess the biggest advice I would have given myself many years ago, knowing how things were going to turn out, is in in Claudia touched on it is not to be afraid of change, um, because it's going to happen. And uh, I when I went to law school, I thought I was going to be a career diplomat and and travel all around the world. And then um, I also took the business route, got my MBA in Chicago because I wanted to have that experience of living and studying in the US. And I did end up traveling the world because my work allowed me to it, but um, I was not a diplomat. Um, but I, w once I started my career, uh, the, the jobs take you in very different directions. Companies take you in very many different directions. I, in, in my 14 years of orbits, I've been through more change and restructuring than I ever thought was possible in a company. Um, and you have to be open and flexible to those changes and, and be able to cope with um, what the life is, what, what life is going to throw at you. So did I know, I mean, many years ago that I was going to end up where I'm right now? Very likely, no, I was, I, I would not have expected that um, I would be working in technology with the background that I had. Um, but I'm learning new things every day and, and I'm grateful for all the experiences that I'm having and uh, lucky that, that I've known all the people that I've known along the way. And and, and just, especially in a year like this one where there's been so much change and so much uncertainty, I mean, being able to find your mechanism to cope with it and accept it and, and, and knowing that 
it's going to happen when you least expect it and change is going to be thrown at you. Don't be afraid of it. Go with it. Um, use your resources at your disposal and um, be open to new challenges. And I just I, I want to pick up on what you both said about mentorship. And I would I would also say it's having a support network around you because yeah. it's true. We never know what you know what is to come. There are going to be changes, opportunities. And you know, I think many people on the call are part of Latinas in tech. Uh, and you know, whatever it might be, find your support network to help you yeah. be resilient and get through all of the changes to come. So thank you both. Um, the next question is going to be for Erica and Cynthia. Uh, and it is, uh, can, can you both tell us about an obstacle that you faced, whether it's personal or professional, uh, and what you did to overcome it? Erica, why don't we start with you? Sure, happy to jump in. So um, had lots of obstacles. I'm, I'm not going to pick the biggest obstacle, but for me, it was um, really a defining moment in my career. Uh, so that's why uh, I'm going to choose to share this one. Um, so I was early in my career, I was actually on an extended internship, um, and I was working on a, a proposal program, we we're uh, trying to get it was for a $4 billion bid so a pretty important um, proposal program and one of the things we needed to do in order to, to get this proposal was to um, show that we could pass this certification and efficient software development. And the way that we were going to do that is with our kind of sister program. Uh, located near us for to say like, hey, they've passed theirs, so we're going to pass ours. So they were failing their certification. Um, they've kind of gotten the lowest marks. And so our program had said they're going to send someone over there to help them um, achieve kind of what we needed for this certification. So they sent me over. And you have to imagine kind of I was, you know, 21, I think I was, I had braces actually uh, in my early 20s and I had pink rubber bands around them because I've always, you know, not shied away from being bold and kind of what I'm wearing. And um, so I kind of show up, you know, like super energetic, super, you know, fresh, fresh from college slash still in college. And um, you could just tell the disappointment on their face uh, when I showed up that this was, this was not who they were expecting to come save the day um, for this massive certification uh, program. Um, so I, um, you know, immediately they started handing me all the grunt work. Um, and, uh, you know, I wasn't offended. Like I, I knew I'm the intern here, but I also knew that that wasn't going to kind of meet the need and kind of the reason I was there. So um, I took on uh, kind of all of the grunt work that was given to me. Um, but then I was really looking to, to make sure that I can involve myself to actually start kind of accomplishing the goal that was set out there. So I heard they had these like morning standups at 7am that I hadn't been invited to. So um, I decided to start going. And um, I just started engaging. And um, you know, uh, to cut the long story short, um, they really started seeing me as an important part of, of this process. And ultimately they pulled together kind of a steering committee of, of seven folks, uh, all who were kind of senior engineers, executives, and myself. And, um, and so for me, it was, you know, just really great to see kind of, they'd written me off at the beginning and then I became an integral part of this work and ultimately kind of, you know, we got the highest score possible and we got the program bid and, and kind of all that stuff. And, and I built um, lasting working relationships, but I think really kind of the piece that why this was really formative in my career was this was kind of, you know, just something that I've always taken with me of, you know, it's fine if, if, if you maybe underestimate me kind of walking in of what I may bring to the table, um, I'm not gonna let that deter me. Um, I know kind of the value that I can bring and I'm gonna find a way to bring that value and to help out, so. What a great story. And Erica, having worked with you for a number of years, uh, I'm not surprised at that story. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't know before, but just, you know, you are very determined. You always drive value and business output and, uh, what a great story. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia, what about you? I had so many professional obstacles I wanted to share, but given that Erika has gone professional, I'm going to go with a personal one, um, big one, and it touches on the point around mentorship, your support network, and do not underestimate how important it's actually taking care of yourself. Uh, particularly in times of crisis. And actually a really good mentor of mine who is in this room once told me, do not underestimate what it takes to move from one side of the world to the other. 
and the toll that it takes on families. So as I say, I'm still waiting for my container. Uh, so this is the year that I moved from Singapore to Seattle. I think there are not two opposite sides of the world that are farther than that. Um, <laughs> and uh, at the same time, as I was saying, it was at the time of taking a big, huge role, also driven by support by my mentor, also in this room, <laughs> who pushed me to get here, which was part of the fir first question. I moved from strategic uh, international expansion roles uh, very generally corporate type of roles to actually a full commercial owning a full PNL, our largest financial institutions partner. And so in this year, um, we've uh, kind of lost part of the contract of that partner, which is a big hit uh, and, and a good learning for all of us. Um, I got divorced this year. I moved across the world. I still don't have my cloth, but um, you know, and as I was taking a stock of Q3 and I just did the kickoff of Q4 with my team, uh, I realized that I'm probably, you know, happier than ever I've been before. So just all of that to say that, you know, uh, I think a lot of the professional obstacles we face on the day to day um, are really bumps in the road and are actually learnings. Um, and I love actually the, the when the day gets more challenging and more challenging, it's actually we're just trying to learn how to solve issues. And as someone told me the other day also, you know, no one is dying, which is um, so true. I'm not a doctor. I would have loved to become a doctor. I'm not, but I'm trying to solve problems for our partners, for our customers. And there are so many important things in life that we just need to keep a look out and, and make sure that again we have that support network we'll get mentors in our life that will support us and it was just mental health day two days ago if you all remember and i think it has been a year of learning that there is so much going on for everyone that we are here also to take care of each other and principally to take care of our or ourselves yeah so thank that's, you yeah Thank you for sharing so openly. My year uh, of change. Simply. Yes, your year of change and, and resilience, clearly. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to the next question for Christina and Erica, which is, um, tell us about a time you pursued an opportunity and it paid off. What was it? Christina, why don't we start with you? So very, uh, very recent example, I was just mentioning that I've been in my current job for, a year, but again, before that, I was managing landing pages, our orbits, and Expedia. When 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 you do a search for uh, flights to Madrid or hotels in Buenos Aires, those were the pages that I was managing. So it's the most customer-facing experience that you can imagine. And I knew my space very well. I was very comfortable with what I was doing. But through my network of people within the company, I got the opportunity to move to a totally different area within the organization and move into this platform space. Um, very different customers coming from a very marketing side uh, to a very technical side, very different customers, uh, very different customer experience. We do have customers, but now they are internal. Um, dealing with infrastructure, which is a space that I knew nothing about other than being a customer of the infrastructure and knowing that it's there. It's there and it works. And, and if it's not, I'm sure there are people who fix it. Um, but now it's my team who fixes it. And um, very completely different group of people with different backgrounds. And I, I, I hesitated. I was like, is this the space that I want to go to? Because I, I was coming with my product experience, but can I translate my product experience into this new space? And I love the people that I talked to um, and I got really lucky. I have a great team to manage, a great team of people to work with. Um, I'm helping build this platform that our CEO and our CTO keep talking about that is gonna revolutionize travel. And, um, and so far it's been a great journey. So ecstatic to have made the, 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 the change. Thank you, Christina. Well, you got out of your comfort zone, took on something new, and, and it's an impact. I can say it is a very impactful project. So um, thank you for taking it on. Erica, do you want to share as well? Yeah. And um, actually, you're the one who told me I should share this uh, with people at some, at some point. So here I am. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I had been... Um, 
as I mentioned, kind of my first role uh, at Expedia, I'd been in that role for, for a few years and was ready for the next challenge. And so started to kind of look around Expedia, um, what, what next? Um, I had my sight set on a product role. Um, I'll, call, I'll call Ariane. It was to report to Ariane. And I had always kind of wanted to report to Ariane um, and uh, ended up not getting the role, which was fine. Um, but kind of another role uh, people had approached me about, and it was something I hadn't considered at all. And, and not something that kind of on the offset, I was like, oh, absolutely. So it was, it was that role to lead supply. Um, and so I, you know, I figured why don't I at least be open to this and, and have the conversation. So, um, and one thing to add to it too, by the way, kind of, this would have been a lateral move versus kind of a promotion move, which, uh, you know, I had been looking at, um, and had been told I was ready for. So, um, so this was kind of delaying that promotion. Um, but, uh, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be open to it. So, um, started having the conversations kind of really enjoyed everybody that I met with. Um, there were some pieces of it of, you know, I'd always wanted to try living in Germany and, and I would be moving to Germany. Um, and also I think the bigger part that interested me was just the opportunity to try something new that I hadn't considered and really hadn't done before. Um, so, uh, I ended up deciding to do it, um, had a wonderful time, uh, really kind of enjoyed a lot of the learnings from working uh, from a different country, especially uh, when you're working with an American company that's got a lot of critical mass in uh, the U.S. I am living and working outside of the U.S. I think brings um, a pretty unique perspective that's very different from just traveling and working uh, from a, a different country. Um, and uh, and also kind of ended up building a lot of the skills that now I use today in my role as well, and, and, and really kind of um, the, so I did a lot of the negotiations and, and that negotiation strategy was super interesting. And that's ultimately, I assume why, uh, people thought I would be a good fit for, for leading the insure tech business where supply is part of, uh, it, but it really lands me to now where I have product supply and tech together, which is ultimately where I wanted to be. So, um, super excited and got that promotion. Yes, it got delayed a little bit, but um, it ended up happening. So um, paid off in the end. Yes, well, thank you for sharing. And Erica, I think sort of what all of you said in your introduction and here, it's it's almost, you know, every, if you change the scope you're working on every couple of years, it's like each time you're learning something new, you're getting yourself out of your comfort zone, you're building a new skill set. And you know, your example of going from a strategy role to then moving to Germany in a more commercial role, I remember the conversations we had about your decision, but then also about, okay, look, I've never run a commercial team. How do I think about this? And I think you made good use of sort of me as a mentor of, you know, how, how do I help there? And um, I think it's, it's a great example because again, then you ended up getting the promotion and the, the job that you wanted. So thank you for sharing. Um, I am going to now go back to, to Claudia and Cynthia, which is, what do you think Expedia Group is doing differently that really stands out for you today? Claudia, why don't we start with you? Sure, um, so um, there's a couple of things that I can, I, I can think of. So the first thing is uh, around inclusion and diversity. It's incredible the, uh, the uh, amount of effort and investment that Expedia is doing on educating everybody on uh, these topics. I feel very, very uh, lucky to be part of a company that is so invested on these because thanks to all of that, I've, I've been able to overcome all of my, you know, uh, issues with my identity and understand how can I go and, and navigate them. And, uh, and uh, again, go to uh, seek for new challenges and and that uh, representation is important. So I think that that's something that they uh, experience doing great. Um, today, uh, we're also trying to do a great job around, you know, creating a better pipeline, hiring uh, more diverse talent. So uh, you all and I can see more faces like ours in the industry. That's something that is very important for me, has been very important in the past that I didn't see people that talked like me or had the background that I had. So now being able to share this story with this amazing group is important. And this is thanks to Expedia. 
uh, largely, right? That they have trusted me, they have given me the opportunities, they are not, you know, scared to go with, uh, with uh, someone. If you have the talent, they will give you the opportunity and they will help you prepare too. Uh, also, the mentorship program is amazing. I, we have all talk about that. I think we all have mentors in this room, like here, like within our group, within this group, we, uh, we have our own mentors, which is amazing. And, uh, and then lately, you know, uh, I, I see a lot of effort trying to, again, provide more opportunities and, uh, you know, be conscious about our mental health and well-being. It's another thing that I found for the first time in a company, uh, being so careful and thoughtful about that, as Cynthia mentioned, is the first time I feel I felt uh, empowered and okay to talk about those things with uh, my leaders and with my team members that if you are having mental health problems, that is okay, we can talk about that. And here are all the resources we have to help you to navigate that. Uh, we are not going to judge you because of, because of that, which is huge, right? Like if you come back and say, look, um, I have anxiety and these sort of things affect me a lot, but I'm here, I want to work on it. Uh, no one will judge you or remove opportunities from your path because of that. And that's extremely important. And then everything we do for our travelers, right? We're extremely focused and, uh, and uh, we're driving towards uh, improving our traveler experience uh, every day, as well as our partners uh, experience and our uh, suite of API. So that's, it's, it's an amazing place to be uh, today. Thank you, Claudia. Cynthia, do you have anything to add to that? Wow, plus one to all of that. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pick on the last point, actually. I think we started with the mission of Expedia. Um, we started with how do we travel um, uh, and, and power, actually, the travel industry. I think for me, Expedia is still an organization that has a unique competitive advantage, not just in the technology world, but actually in the entire travel industry. There is no other company that has the end-to-end -end line of business, uh, customers to partners. And if you hear a lot about platforms and how platforms create value and bring consumers and suppliers into that ecosystem, it's all about giving each party that is part of the platform what they need. And, you know, I love our competitors. We'll never book on them. Do not book on them. Book on us. But, you know, uh, they, many of them have vacation rentals. They don't have air. They don't have great hotels when you need a good hotel. They don't have family places when you need to go there. They may not have cars. So if you want an end-to-end -end capability that can give you everything you need when you travel, I think that's Expedia. And I think we're also recognizing that we have a lot to do uh, to come up to speed to serve the customer. And you will have heard things like unifying all of our loyalty programs. Uh, I think the amazing thing is the amount of effort resources that the group is putting behind uh, putting the customer first. And we talk about you know how travel is a force for good. I think we have to remember that we are in a company that actually brings people together and connects the world. And for me, there's nothing more fulfill and, uh, and purpose driven that working for something that uh, connects to inclusion also and that's what travel is for all of us here. Thank you Cynthia. I'm going to start taking a couple of questions from the um, from the chat. I don't know if they're upvoted, downvoted. I'm just going to take the questions that I see. So there's one from Rosa. Uh, to the fellow Spaniards Christina and Cynthia, what characteristics of our culture as Spaniards were helpful when working in the U.S.? And Christina, maybe we can start with you. Yeah, I, 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 I was uh, relating to a lot of the comments that Claudia was making about don't worry about your accent, don't worry about the imposter syndrome. Uh, I think everybody with a Latin background will will feel that way. But um, I, I mean, being Spaniard, I, I consider myself European with um, the ability to relate to everybody in Europe because we've probably traveled all around Europe. Um, but it's also the benefit of being able to relate to everybody in South America and, and develop relationships um, 
and, and, and I've had to work in, in Latin America and in many countries and, and just the ability to relate uh, to, to people in Europe and, and in South America has always been, I was like, oh, this is because I'm from Spain because I can, I can do it in both ways. Um, but I mean, the, the, the rest is just bring your personality, bring your, be, be, be proud of where you are from and, and, and knowing that you can relate and talk to many people and relate to them in, in a very personal way. And, um, and, and, and be proud of it. I mean, as a friend of mine was saying once, but like, Christina, in the States, we are exotic. And I was like, and I was like, I never saw it that way. And I was like, oh, well, well, maybe, maybe that's, that's, that's true. But just be proud of you, who you are and where you're coming from. And, and, uh, and be lucky that you can interact with uh, many people from around the world. Cynthia, do you have anything to add? I mean, if not, I'm happy to go to another Questions. I'll add quickly there. I think the accent, I mean, I can't let that one go. I think I put that on the chat. But, um, you know, I mean, there is no doubt that companies are looking for people that can put themselves on the shoes of their customers. Uh, that's how their products get out of the shelves or the online pages. And the Hispanic and Latino community is just huge. And I love languages. I speak like six of them. And, you know, being able to speak one of the most spoken languages in the world. I mean, it's just a skill that any business would like to have. Um, and so that puts you in a privileged position also. Um, so let's recognize that we also have privilege and use that in your favor uh, and to support others and also be an ally for others. Um, I think that's greatly valued here in the US, more than in Singapore, I would say. <laughs> Thank you so much to both of you. There are a number of questions in the chat um, on the theme of mentors and sponsorship. And I would love it if one of you or two of you could speak about sort of how did you find a mentor or maybe if you changed mentors um, as your career was evolving. And I, I'll let you just take yourselves off of mute. Um, this wasn't a prepared question, but if someone has something interesting to share, Erica, I see you're off of mute. Yeah, I can jump in because um, actually my first mentor um, was really important in my career. Uh, his name was Luis Figueroa, and um, he had studied uh, the same uh, thing as me at Berkeley, and he had kind of reviewed the resumes and saw my resume and um, had proactively reached out. Um, and I think, you know, that was so important to me because that actually just first kind of brought me into understanding what a mentor was. Um, helping me understand that mentors were kind of out there and willing and that it wasn't the scary thing to ask for. Um, and he helped me all the way from kind of the beginning of even as I was making decisions on which full-time role I wanted to take, he was there to help provide me um, advice and, and uh, bounce my ideas off of. Um, he introduced me to other mentors and those other mentors played different roles in my development. So I was always terrified of presentations when, because I, I was your typical engineering person. And um, I, I shouldn't say that. It's what I think of as typical engineer. I was terrified of technical communication um, uh, when, when I was in school. And, um, and so I, uh, I got from that mentor kind of opportunity to really test my skills and real coaching around how to present kind of early on in my career. And then over time that shifted to me kind of understanding what mentors were having a panel of mentors. So that's the other thing is like, don't think about it as one mentor but there's different mentors for different parts of your career, different parts of your life, et cetera. Um, and, and then really kind of now it's more, some things just naturally organically form. Sometimes, you know, people offer and um, sometimes I, I've asked. Um, I, it's, it's been a while since I've kind of asked more of it is much more organic nowadays um, and then reach out to different people. And mentors can be people who are more senior than you. They can be people more junior than you. Um, they can be people, be people on your team, not on your team, et cetera. So really kind of having clarity on kind of what, what that conversation is going to bring to the table, I think is helpful as you start to think about, okay, who should my panel of mentors be? Um, and the reason kind of I started with how my mentorship started is because I think, you know, as professionals, we all have something to bring as a mentor. Um, and so kind of being aware that for people, especially people kind of earlier in their career, they may be kind of scared on how to ask uh, to have a mentoring relationship. 
Um, and so really kind of being proactive when you see a potential opportunity, um, I think can be really helpful as well. And you know what I would add to that, Erica, as well, is don't forget when you're a mentee, uh, you're bringing a lot of value also to your mentor. You know, when you share your experience, uh, it also helps the mentor sort of evolve. So I know when I was young in my career, it felt like I was sort of, it was this big deal to ask someone to mentor me. It was like this obligation, they were going to spend time. But then I started to realize, actually, they're also getting something out of it. So does anybody else, Christina, you're off of mute. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I've, um, I'm lucky that I've had uh, different people in my career that have helped me, but I've also enjoyed when people were coming up to me with uh, questions and, and I was realizing, I was like, I've, I've, had, I've had the same problems. I'm probably having the same problem that you are having right now. Let's talk about it. Um, so I think it's a, it's a very two-way um, road and, 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 and sometimes roles even reverse because you, you can get a lot from your mentee and in the same way than the, the, that you can get from a mentor. Don't, don't discard, uh, and even, even with friends, I mean, friends that you have in the company, they can help you uh, navigate certain issues that you might be having in the company or, or in other area, and don't 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 feel that you have to have this formal relationship. Just again, Ariana, you were saying use your support network. Your your friends can be your mentors. Your friends can be your mentees. So think about it that way because sometimes you feel like, oh, I need to have this formal mentor, and I'm going to be talking to them on a biweekly basis. Sometimes it's not that a friend of yours can be that person that you need. That's going to help you in your career and in your day. Completely, completely. Thank you for sharing. I'm actually going to move on to another question. I'm going to group two questions together uh, by Andrea and Francis. Uh, it's the first one is, have you ever struggled with imposter syndrome or doubted yourself if you were smart or capable enough? And how did you handle that? And link to that is, you know, what are the ways you learn to be your authentic self um, throughout your career? It can be challenging at times as Latinas, especially when we're the only person in the room. So imposter syndrome and sort of being true to yourself. Claudia, it looks like you've come off of mute. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about that because it's my constant struggle, I would say. I, I keep saying that uh, uh, this is something that uh, uh, I constantly need to work on. I'm, all the time um, telling myself, uh, you're probably not doing a great job. You're probably going to, you know, say something that is not right. You, someone is going to, uh, you know, hear something about uh, what you're saying and they will think that that's on the right path. Uh, but also when, especially when you're a Latina, right? And you're in a room with either only uh, men uh, in the room or, uh, you know, extremely, uh, um, men tech dominated rooms uh, whenever you say something you start feeling like is is that what i should be saying and then doubting yourself around things that you should be bringing to the table and then next second someone else is just saying exactly the same what you were thinking right and it's like ah oh, no it was not a dumb question it was not a, a dumb idea and here i am not being the one because again i'm not sure if i should be saying that Erica has been helping me a lot with that. Like when we have conversations, she talks to me a lot about that, which is great. And that's why, again, it's great to have mentors that have gone through similar things, things like you. And you understand that when you do that first connection, right? And or a couple of connections. So you, you test if, if your mentor uh, or the person you're reaching out can help you with that. And then uh, the way I, I work uh, 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 around it is basically I have a support network. I read a lot, I try to educate myself, I try to remind myself all the time, this is imposter syndrome, go ahead. And I push myself constantly to get out of my comfort zone. Today, it's an example. Like, I was like, how, in, how am I going to be in this panel? Like, oh my God, I follow Latinas in tech and now being part of this, I'm not sure if I'm ready for it, right? But then I, I told myself, do it, and it's going to be fine. Force yourself to, to do that, right? So uh, uh, again, making sure that you 
getting out of that comfort zone is important and try to 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 challenge yourself to do that it's a good way to combat imposter syndrome and then uh, i think the other question was about you know trying to to identify your identity and and how you 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 become your your own self it was very challenging for me to be honest in in spain i had to work a lot around my identity and who i was i uh, and, and 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 christina um um, I found amazing uh, Spaniards that supported me a lot, but also I had to struggle with people that didn't understand me. And I was like, I'm speaking Spanish as you are too, uh, <laughs> but I don't use the same words. So um, I, I saw myself transition into this new person that was like a mix of being myself, but speaking differently and trying to follow this culture and all that. And when I joined Expedia and I started to get access to all these resources, I said, wait a second, I don't, I don't need to do that. I I can just talk and be myself and that's okay. And I don't need to use vosotros for people to understand me. I can use ustedes because that's how I I, I, I speak, right? And mm -hmm. and uh, and again, it's it's a work that you need to do with yourself, and you need to you know uh, constantly remind yourself about about your values, but also find a good network that will support you and will help you get uh, get there. And and again, trust yourself, be proud of yourself. Uh, remind yourself that you are constantly going through important challenges because we're underrepresented, but that doesn't mean that you can't accomplish great things. So uh, just get out there and, 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 and do it. Do have our support. This is how, how we are here. Thank you, Claudia. Did, did any of the other panelists want to add anything? I was curious. just going to add, um, I mean, two, two very um, brief things. One, I like also to demystify the fact of imposter syndrome is usually always um, associated with female. And, you know, and in our case, we are talking today Latinas. But I know many amazing men that actually have a huge imposter syndrome. They just know how to hide it better. So <laughs> I will just say sometimes we also need to be allies to uh, those men that actually have a very strong imposter syndrome and may feel that they cannot even recognize that just because of the understanding that maybe that's not something that they are even allowed to. And uh, the second one I will say, I mean, is, is as Claudia said, it's all about fears is, and fears hold us back. And it's actually the big fear of failing. I mean, we're constantly scared of what will happen if I fail. And I think we forget that success is about failing and then learning. And that's how we get there. And so go out and, you know, fail and, and you'll get there. I think that's the way. So don't yeah, just, let fears hold you back. Uh, just, Cynthia, to add to that, I know I used to work with a coach and she would talk to me about um, the imposter syndrome, basically being a gremlin. Like it was the voice in my head that was a gremlin. And she said, all right, you just have to figure out a way to like tame the gremlin and, you know, get rid of it. And that image was really helpful. And then also just thinking like, what's the worst that could happen? I think someone said earlier, like we're not saving lives. Now, maybe people on this call are doctors and that's a bit different, but um, there's something about also putting things in perspective. Uh, I think we have time for one or two more questions. Uh, and this one is a specific question to Erica. It says, first, thank you for putting on this session. Love to hear all of your experience and the value that you all bring to EG. My question is for Erica. One of my twin girls is a math whiz just like you. She's on her last year of college with the bachelor's of engineering and will go for a master's in math. What advice would you give her as she'll be uh, um, uh, going from college into the workforce? Yeah, so actually I think, um, I think the advice is very similar to the conversation we just had about imposter syndrome. Um, so I'll just add, add to that, that uh, I'm not immune to that either and still something that I regularly work on and have used the same techniques that Ariane just talked about of kind of having this actually named 
the person and visualize her uh, sitting in a closet with a bottle of wine. Um, but I think, I think, you know, kind of as you're going out of college into the workforce, right, that's a very different shift of how you're used to, um, you know, operating, right? And in college, you've got kind of like this, this problem that you're out solving, you do it, maybe you do it with a team, and then it's done. And, and it's, it's just much more encapsulated in general. Um, and then you go into the workforce, and there's, you know, tons of people working on all different pieces of the same thing. It's all intertwined. You have kind of usually like there's no right answer um, to, to what it is that you're doing. Um, and so that can be overwhelming and can be kind of something that can put you into that imposter syndrome and wondering if you have what it takes. So I think, I think the biggest uh, kind of advice I would give is that the answer is yes. Like your daughter has gone through college and is prepared and ready. And um, that, and I think what Cynthia is saying about like success is a series of failures learning along the way. Right. And so kind of knowing that that's part of the process um, uh, and, and that things are going to be tough and that's good. Right. If they're not tough, then you're not learning and then kind of, it's not fun. So, um, so yeah, so just knowing and having that confidence that yes, you have a right to be there and that uh, making mistakes is part of the journey. Thank you, Erica. And I'm going to ask one last question. There, and it's it's a bit linked to, to that one, but there are a number of questions that are centered around skills, pursuing an MBA. I, I think we heard in the introduction that three of our panelists uh, went and got an MBA. And also sort of just the applying to a large company like Expedia if someone has worked in a small business. So I think it's really about sort of making pivots, whether from small business to a large company, deciding to go get an MBA and change career tracks. Um, Beyond what we've already talked about, are there any advice or tips um, from the panelists about learning and trying something new? I think always kind of learn and try something new. I mean, yeah. that's the only thing I can say. That's the way you will get ahead. Again, don't be afraid of what you are not. Uh, empower what you are good at. Uh, I think I answered one of the questions um, typing there, but. You don't need to be an engineer or a fantastic mathematician to be in tech. Uh, you know, being a generalist is actually very underrated, but all companies need basic business acumen and skills. Uh, we are selling to customers that are normal people at the end, and we need to understand how they work and how they're going to be able to navigate a site rather than a fantastic engineer that may make it uh, amazing for tech people. So. I think what I would recommend is uh, play your strength to get into the place that you want to go. And then once you come into a place like Expedia, I mean, again, I've gone from a strategy to international expansion to corp dev to managing a huge p &L. And I couldn't be prouder of myself where I am today. And I have no idea how I will get here. So, you know, uh, basically play your strength. And then once you're in the right company, you will get the support, get your mentors, get your sponsors, and move to your dream job. And, and um, if you see if you see an opportunity that you like, don't think that you need to meet every single requirement because there's that fear that prevents a lot of people was like, oh, but I'm not I'm not fitting every single requirement of the job. So I don't want to try it. Still try it. And again, as Cynthia was saying, play your strengths, find your value because there are, you have value that the job might require and and don't be afraid to try it again change is good and 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 and, and, and go for it and and if if it doesn't work out try something else but don't be afraid of trying something just because oh i'm not gonna fit and try again you're not, you're not gonna know until you try it and i'm gonna jump in with one kind of slightly different point of view so one, in terms of kind of your strengths, I, I would try to boil it down to like, what is the core strength? So it may not be the tasks that you carried out, but are you a problem solver at heart? Are you good at big picture? Are you good at small picture? Are you good at both porpoising, whatever, but kind of try to abstract that a bit. And um, I actually actively try to do things as different as possible from any experience I've had before. So I tend to think of it as kind of a logarithmic scale. And once I'm kind of off the steep part of the slope, it's time for me to move to something that's going to get me back on a steep slope. Um, so, so I would encourage you to actually actively look for what's going to help you, uh, accelerate your learning. Yeah. 
Can I, can I add one, one more thing? thing? Because yeah. I'm sorry, I know we're at time, but I think it's important for those, uh, the younger generation that is trying to get that first role, prepare yourself. Like make sure that you get support from others, that you create your stories. Even if you don't have the experience, you have practical experience on your day-to-day -day life, right? So budgeting, well, you probably, your parents are, are giving you allowance that you have to, you know, uh, work, uh, through your careers. Uh, so make sure that you prepare yourself for that interview, even if you don't have all the uh, work experience, so you get that role. And uh, once you get that role, apply all the other uh, uh, great advices that Cynthia, Eric, and Christina just, just gave you. So we are at the top of the hour. I would like to say a massive thank you to our four panelists, Cynthia, uh, Claudia, Christina, and Erica. A very big thank you to Latinas in Tech, team. And also, I don't know if others can see the, the two boxes and the names of Daniela and Marina, who are our president and vice president of the lead organization and who were instrumental in pulling this together. So thank you to the two of you as well. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed this and that uh, we'll be able to continue the conversation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Gracias.